A train in China has just done the unthinkable, surpassing the speed of a commercial jet in a series of test runs, reaching a jaw-dropping 1,000 kilometers per hour. Forget the airport, China's new maglev floats above steel at nearly the velocity of flight, and suddenly a Shanghai to Beijing trip could take less than two hours. But how does it really work? And what will it take to make this faster than a plane revolution more than just a headline? Magnetic levitation, or maglev, begins with a simple but radical idea. Eliminate contact with the track. In China's new generation of high-speed trains, this is achieved through electromagnetic suspension, known as EMS. Here, the train floats just a few millimeters above a specially engineered rail held up by powerful magnets and controlled in real time by advanced electronics. The absence of wheels means there's no rolling friction, only the resistance of air remains. This tiny gap, often less than 10 millimeters, is maintained by a constant dance of magnetic forces, responding to thousands of adjustments every second. EMS technology relies on magnets both above and below the train's guideway. By carefully tuning the attraction and repulsion between these magnets and the coils embedded in the track, engineers can lift and stabilize a train weighing dozens dozens of tons. The system's sensors and control units monitor the gap at microsecond intervals, making corrections to keep the train perfectly balanced, even as it accelerates beyond 600 kilometers per hour. Unlike Japan's EDS approach, which uses superconducting magnets and induced currents to create lift, China's EMS design is active. A network of electromagnets constantly adjusts to every shift and vibration. This active control isn't just about speed, it's what allows the train to glide almost silently, with minimal vibration and wear. The lack of physical contact slashes maintenance demands and virtually eliminates dust and fire fine particle emissions. The result is a ride that's not only faster, but also smoother and quieter than anything on steel rails. To reach such extraordinary speeds, every gram counts. Chinese engineers have turned to carbon fiber bodies and lightweight superconducting magnets, reducing the train's mass while maximizing the strength of its magnetic fields. The latest high-temperature superconductors, such as YBCO and REBCO tapes, operate at higher temperatures and deliver stronger fields than traditional magnets. This means less energy is needed to keep the train levitated and stable, even as it pushes toward the limits of terrestrial travel. At the heart of this system is precision. The track's flatness is measured to fractions of a millimeter, and the alignment of magnets is checked repeatedly during construction. Any deviation could threaten stability at high speeds. The entire train, from its aerodynamic nose to its magnet-lined undercarriage, is designed for one purpose, to glide above the earth, unbound by the friction that has limited trains for nearly two centuries. As engineers refine these levitation systems, they lay the groundwork for the next breakthroughs, where physics meets engineering, and the dream of city-to-city -city travel in under two hours becomes more than just a headline. On a humid morning at the Qingdao test site, a team of engineers gathered in the control room, eyes fixed on a wall of monitors. The prototype maglev, built with a carbon fiber shell and loaded with sensors, waited at the far end of the track. Lead engineer Dr. Liu from Southwest Jiaotong University recalls the tension before the run. The previous month, a resonance issue had forced an emergency shutdown at 590 kilometers per hour. Now, after weeks of recalibrating coil arrays and refining the active damping system, the team was ready to push beyond 600. The train accelerated with a low, steady hum, gliding above the guideway on a cushion of magnetic force. Within seconds, the digital speed readout climbed past 600 kilometers per hour. Data streams showed vibration levels holding steady, the carbon fiber body flexing within safe limits. In the control room, a technician shouted as the counter ticked past 605, then 610. The run ended with a smooth deceleration, all telemetry in the green.
green. For the first time, a Chinese maglev had held stable above 600 kilometers per hour outside of a vacuum tube. Not long after, at the Chengdu test track, engineers repeated the feat with a second prototype, confirming the reliability of the new active damping algorithms. The breakthrough wasn't just about raw speed. The real test was stability, maintaining the delicate magnetic gap, suppressing micro vibrations, and keeping the ride smooth enough for passengers. Dr. Liu's team had solved a problem that haunted earlier attempts how to keep a train weighing over 30 tons perfectly balanced at speeds where even a millimeter of drift could spell disaster. Then came the Donghu Laboratory run in Hubei. There, a 1.1-ton test vehicle hit 650 kilometers per hour in just 7 seconds on a 1,000-meter track, setting a new global record. The rapid acceleration profile, a direct result of lightweight superconducting magnets and advanced power supply, demonstrated that the system could not only reach but sustain extreme velocities. Engineers monitored every variable, magnetic field strength, coil temperature, aerodynamic drag. Each successful run built confidence that the physics would hold at full scale. With these results, China's maglev engineers proved more than theory. They delivered hard evidence that stable, ultra-high-speed travel is possible. The relief in the control rooms was palpable, a sense that years of trial, error, and sleepless nights had finally paid off. For Dr. Liu and his colleagues, the next challenge was clear, transforming these test track victories into a passenger experience unlike anything the world has seen. A Journey Between Beijing and Shanghai by Maglev promises a different experience from flying. Instead of a long drive to the airport and waiting in security lines, passengers board in the heart of the city. The train glides out of the station, accelerating with a gentle push. No jolts, no sudden climbs. At full speed, the ride is almost silent, with barely a hint of vibration beneath the seats. For trips under a thousand kilometers, this city-to-city -city connection erases the hidden hours spent on ground transfers and boarding procedures. On the Tokyo to Osaka corridor, studies show that maglev's door-to-door -door time can rival or even beat the fastest planes thanks to its direct downtown access. The comfort inside matches the speed outside, steady pressure, no turbulence, and a smoothness that turns high velocity into an afterthought. Measured by carbon output, the difference between maglev and air travel is striking. On current test runs, China's maglev trains generate an estimated 10 to 25 grams of CO2 per passenger kilometer, a figure that reflects both the efficiency of electric propulsion and the country's evolving energy grid. In contrast, short-haul jets on routes like Beijing to Shanghai typically emit between 90 and 130 grams per passenger kilometer. These numbers depend on factors like train occupancy and the mix of renewables and fossil fuels in the grid. But even under conservative assumptions, Maglev's footprint is a fraction of aviation's. An environmental analyst from the International Energy Agency points out that as China's grid shifts toward more renewables, the emissions gap will only widen. For policymakers weighing long-term investments, these figures offer a concrete basis for comparing the climate impact of future transport networks. China's commitment to maglev technology is measured in billions of dollars. The national goal is clear. By 2035, a high-speed network will connect major city clusters, linking maglev lines seamlessly with existing bullet trains. Funding for these projects comes not only from state budgets, but also from public-private partnerships, with estimates ranging from $11 to $18 billion invested by 2025. This financial firepower is matched by a global rivalry. In Japan, the SC Maglev project holds the crude speed record at 603 km per hour, while Germany's TransRapid Technology once set the commercial benchmark. China's CRRC aims to surpass both, not just in speed, but in market reach, positioning Maglev as a flagship export for the Belt and Road Initiative. Each new contract or test run is a contest for leadership, with patents and intellectual property disputes adding to the competition. The race is as much about economic influence as it is about engineering prowess. Vacuum tube maglev promises speeds once reserved for science fiction, but the engineering reality is far more complex. 
Building and maintaining near-vacuum tunnels hundreds of kilometers long demands unprecedented precision. Each segment, often 6 meters in diameter, must align within millimeters to prevent leaks that could compromise the entire system. The energy required to sustain low-pressure environments and keep superconducting magnets cold adds another layer of cost and complexity. Land acquisition along busy corridors like Shanghai to Beijing has sparked disputes with local governments and property owners, raising questions about social and financial feasibility. Safety certification for passenger travel at 1,000 km per hour remains undefined, with no published protocols for emergencies or rapid decompression inside sealed tubes. A transport economist notes that while test vehicles have reached 620 km per hour in controlled settings, commercial service at those speeds is still a distant goal. Evacuated tube maglev concepts, aiming for 1,200 km per hour, remain in the research stage, a vision for the future, not yet a reality. In 2021, China's maglev prototypes surpassed 600 km per hour on the Qingdao and Chengdu test tracks, marking a new chapter in high-speed ground transport. Engineers achieved this by combining electromagnetic suspension with lightweight carbon fiber bodies and superconducting magnets, reducing friction and drag to near zero. While public records confirm test speeds above 600 km per hour, claims of 1,000 km per hour remain limited to controlled laboratory conditions with no independent verification. The environmental impact is clear. Maglev travel can emit as little as 10 to 25 grams of CO2 per passenger kilometer, compared to 90 to 100 30 grams for short-haul flights. Yet, the full-scale rollout faces major barriers, from costly vacuum tunnels to land acquisition and strict safety certification. Some technical documents and project results remain unpublished, leaving the timeline for a national maglev network uncertain. What is clear is that for now, China's maglev program stands at the forefront of engineering ambition, setting new benchmarks for speed and sustainability in transportation.